It was, uh, you know, by design. We were going to let Malik start the game. Uh, had a really good series, uh, effective series. Let Will go and then make a decision and then give those guys uh, two series, you know, the best that we could, two series each from, from the remainder of the game. So just trying to get them all the situations, trying to get them work. I mean, I think as when you start to look at it, you know, backup quarterbacks, you know, they're going to have to be able to go in there on a, at a moment's notice. You know, sometimes you're going to, you know, have a week to prepare and they're going to know. But, you know, I would say that most of the time you're going to – they're going to have to come in off the bench and, and be ready to execute. So that's some of the things that we were trying to recreate. How many guys do you, do you tell them that that's what the case for? Um, you know, I think we probably had a conversation, you know, the day before the game just – you know what the plan was, and you know we want every player that that's here that's healthy to prepare as a starter uh, through this process and understand we're in training camp mode. But then, you know, quickly um, prior to the game, you start preparing. You know, for a game, and again, it's abbreviated, but you know, we want them all to prepare as a starter, uh, be prepared to play the entire game. You know, we obviously know that that doesn't happen uh, at every position or for every player, but then. You know, so that the quarterbacks are, are staying in tune and every position is staying in tune of what they need to do throughout the course of the game. That last drive in, in the first half, how do you, you like the way Malik was able to orchestrate that, get you guys yeah. in position? Yeah, I mean, sure, those, those are great situations, you know, situations that we work on in practice. Um, you know, we talked about it, you know, after you know, whatever things happen in practice, that's why you practice, to, to come out there and to be able to execute and to have, you know, 19 seconds on the clock, no timeouts, and... You know, be in a down, down clock situation and have them execute it and then make the field goal. So that that's it's really positive. What kind of things did you learn from your non-head coach perspective yesterday of kind of overseeing things? I mean, just try, you know, I mean, just trying to evaluate, you know, where where guys were, trying to evaluate most of the same things I would normally do. You know, where we were with operation, you know, play calls, uh, substitution. Um, Seeing how the process went with the the booth and the and the communication upstairs to to quickly relay the situation or, or things that were going on and um, you know we had some guys that were you know playing a lot of snaps and playing special team snaps I think just trying to evaluate that and you know manage that and get guys in there. Both a, a nice chance, Caleb though kicking out of bounds is that that scores field goal down in any any way? What happens there? I, we, we don't want to kick the ball out of bounds. I don't, I mean, there's not a point system or a scale. We just, we don't want to kick the ball out of bounds. We want to make our field goals and not kick it out of bounds. What do you think Levis did first time out? What'd you like? What'd you, what, what's he got to get better at? Well, I mean, I think just letting the game come to him, just take what's there, you know, just trying to make sure that we're, we're not overdoing it, that we're just playing a one, one role, a large role as a quarterback in the offense and, you know, taking what they give you, and then when there's opportunities to, to work the ball down the field, do that. Um, did, did some nice things. You know, I thought did some some really nice things and, you know, would like to have some plays back, uh, you know, from the game. And then, you know, being in a tough situation there, you're only going to get, you know, one chance to, to hit a chunk play probably. And, you know, they came back and we didn't hit it, and then so obviously that makes it even more more difficult to come back and, and try to get it in there the next time. As far as Malik goes, I mean, did he continue to do yesterday what you've seen in practices as far as being Yeah, I thought that there was some composure. I thought that, you know, there were some opportunities for him to, to run. Uh, he, he ran, you know, and, and, and was able to do that. thought he did a nice job, you know, when he, when he did get out of the pocket, keeping his eyes down the field and was able to – to, to be a thrower when he felt like there was something there. Um, you know, never going to restrict his ability to, to to make plays with his feet. Just be smart with the football. You saw him convert down there in the red zone for, you know, a huge, huge first down that allowed us to to then eventually score uh, with Malik there, you know, at the end of that first drive. What did you run with the first team O-line in their one drive? I thought it was efficient. I thought that they did some really good things. and. Um, you know, we were able to run the football. We were able to, you know, we had the delay, which, you know, was on everybody. But, you know, ultimately the quarterback and, and, and making sure that, that we're processing everything quickly and getting it to them. And, but, 
you know, I thought that there were some good looks there of things that we had worked on in practice that you know, we got some pile push, you know, we got some guys cleaning out the pocket, we got some movement, uh, we're able to run some different plays, you know, blocked up a, a gap scheme play really well, um, really well where there was a, a lot of space in there. So they just keep improving and progressing. But, you know, I thought that they did exactly, you know, what I'd hoped that they would do. To see Spears behind that, the first team offensive line, and what you think of? I don't know if it was important to see him behind necessarily that that group. Um, I think it was important just to see him run a football and get a kickoff return, and you know, get tackled, get hit, catch the ball, you know, just play football. Gary, you have any impressions on that? On his time in there, in that first drive. Mm -hmm. No, I mean. It, Keep going. No real impressions other than, you know, we got to make sure that we continue to take care of the football and, you know, did a nice job out there in the open field. And so we'll just keep keep working, progressing, you know, hopefully give them a little bit more work this week. Garrett do a pretty nice job of uh, making some tackles on defense. He triggered also, him and Marsh. Yeah, him and Marsh, they're, they're competitive players. They're, they're not the biggest players, but they're competitive. Uh, Obviously, they came in here on a tryout basis, and both of them, you know, have been able to, you know, earn a roster spot and, and to, to earn more playing time. You know, I thought Anthony Kendall, in the short amount of time that he had on special teams, um, did a nice job in his gunner rep, his double team rep, and his single press. So, you know, what we're going to tell the team, you know, tomorrow is there's going to be a lot of individuals that are going to you know, get more playing time and some that aren't, and some are going to have more opportunities. and. Some of those threes are going to be twos, and some of those twos are going to be threes, and you know that's that's the nature of this business. TD passes. Should there have been more, you know, immediate attention on those receivers as soon as they catch the ball, or was it more of a downfield thing where you didn't see enough tacklers downfield, or both? I mean, two screens, two X play screens, like one they had linemen six yards downfield. We. Had a player come underneath, should have sacked the quarterback. Like it was man coverage. You know, the other one is, you you, you need everybody. You know, somebody's going to have to to get off a block. Somebody's going to have to retrace. Um, but you know, all in all, I think you know, if we can just you know keep going down the season and just say that you know the X plays, whether it's a screen or whatever, we just we just can't give them up. And you know, but I didn't think like I didn't feel like they were just gashing us or wearing us out and they hit two two screens. What are some maybe coach points you'll take from this game maybe moving forward out, out of what you saw yesterday? Mm, conditioning, you know, playing at noon in the preseason, I think conditioning for some of those guys that played extended snaps is critical. Can't let that affect, um, you know, us, our ability to understand our job. You know, made it makes, you know, affect communication, you know, just from, you know, being tired, but we have to know where to line up. We got to be able to work together. Um, so I think the conditioning is critical. Um, the ability to show these guys how critical special teams are and the role that they play, you know, whether that's our ability to cover kicks, you know, we had some opportunities at kickoff return or we had some, some space and then it was one guy or a penalty that puts you inside the 10 or the way we cover kicks. Um, you know, we got to punt the ball better. You know, we absolutely have to punt the ball better. So I think that that, you know, because special teams in practice is, you know, it's you get the early period and then maybe you come back with, you do come back with one later on. But I think it's hard for them to understand how that plays a part in, in the momentum of the game. You know, whether we go in and score and then we have to go cover a kick. And if we're able to, to stop them inside the 20s, you know, start them backed up, just the, the – starting to get these younger guys to understand the flow of the game and how critical a special teams is, is setting the table. Matthew Jackson, as a gunner, uh, I know there's some guys hurt in front of him. He had a big opportunity there. How did he do? I thought he did okay. You know what I mean? He split the double team one time, and, you know, we'll keep working with Matt. And, you know, he's, he's a big kid that can run. And, um, you know, just being able to keep working and, and, and try to, you know, find a role anywhere he can. I know he's in the mix in that, uh, you know, inside backer yeah. battle, so to speak. Yeah, I thought he played with some good speed. You know, I thought his speed showed up. His speed showed up on special teams. Um, you know, 
so again, I think there's a good group there that's you know got some youth, and then um, you know those guys are all going to have to play you know a bunch of different roles. No both inside linebacker spots, and you know no no be able to help us on all special teams. Terrell Williams thing as as good as you hoped. I mean, you get everything out of it that you that you thought you could for him. How much fun was it to watch him work? It was a lot of fun. I think it was um, enjoyable. It was you know the most important thing. It was was well deserved. It was something that you know I I, I sh absolutely should have done. It was it was cool just to see him communicate and you know he does have a relationship with a lot of guys on the offense and. Um, Watching him sit in those meetings or talk to those players uh, in that capacity was cool. Mike, with the joint practices starting this week, what's the process for deciding where, who goes where, who you're going to be practicing against? Do you have like a preference on the front end, or is it just a function of the, the scheduling and availability? They, they give you some leeway, you know, as far as saying, hey, we'd like to just have this game and schedule this game. Um, so you kind of look, and it starts with the, the the other teams. Like, hey, what are the restrictions that you have? Do you have to be away because you have an event at your your stadium or whatever's going on? Right. You look at availability. You look at teams that you, know, you feel like you'd work with, or you'd like to maybe don't play, and that you'd want to practice against. And, you know, and then you start working through when that would be and what time the game is, and then work back and. You know, so you start with you know maybe three or four teams or you know five teams and end up with with one or two that you end up practicing and playing. What was it about Minnesota that made you feel like you wanted to work with them? I think they've got good skill players. You know, I think that they've got good skill players. I think that's something that can that can help us. I think you know defensively the um, multiple you know with with with, with B flow. Um, you know, Kirk's always done a fantastic job at the end of the game, you know, situationally. And so I felt like just a lot of those factors that, um, you know, could help us. We, we, we do all those things. We do those situations. And, you know, I thought it would be a great opportunity for us. Is it interesting to do it with somebody new? And, and for you maybe to develop more relationships with somebody new, you've obviously got relationships with New England. John had relationships in Tampa Bay. But here, here you are working with a team that maybe you don't know on that level. I'm not sure how that would affect, um, you know, I, I would imagine that everybody is good to work with. They're all professionals. I mean, we just want to try to work and go against somebody new. And, you know, I've known Kevin, so it's a good football team. Go ahead. Coach, you mentioned the conditioning. Is Pulling double duty back there, Jill. <laughs> yes. Um, Hang in there. You mentioned the conditioning is something you want to see continue this week, but as you guys get ready for Minnesota, what's that next? Point? Well, I think it's just the game conditioning, you know, just being able to point out, like, you think that during practice that you're tired or there's a water break or the horn blows, like, that was what really showed up as the drive wore on or the ability to get off the field, same way as on the first drive if we're able to convert first downs and, you know, go down there and ultimately score. So um, that, that's the biggest thing. But I also think that you get into that by practicing and, and continuing to add reps and trying to string, you know, five and six plays together, uh, where maybe early on in camp you're not going as many. Um, but I, I think the best way to condition is being out there and playing and practicing that way. In the defense in the league, it was kind of hard to get a definitive look at the replay. Too high, or does Wiley need to come down with that? Oh, probably a little bit of both. I think that's, you know. I'm sure Malik's going to want to make it lower, and I'm sure Malik, uh, Josh is going to want to catch it. So, you know, something you know we're going to have to execute that play, whether we do one of those two things. But that that's a play that needs to get executed. It was, you know, it was open, and Josh throttled down where he needed to throttle down, and Malik went to the right guy. You know, unfortunately, uh, you know, being having that type of field position, and you know. Those are the ones that that really can change the the game when you look at it. When we're playing, you know, just how the momentum went, being able to get an interception, you know, get a decent return, have it in the fringe, and, and be able to turn that into points is is kind of how we want to play. Was that Malik in yesterday was that more on the the line, more on the quarterbacks holding the ball a little bit? Blame everybody, blame them all, right down there. 
Blame them all. Malik was a little careless with the ball on losing it twice, or were those particular situations? Well, I don't know. The, the, you know, strip sacks are tough. I mean, he's getting ready to throw the football. Um, we, we Everybody was – you know, I mean, the ball security has to improve. There were times whether the ball was a fumble or not. You know, those are all things that we're going to point out and, and make sure. So, I would say Malik and any player, offensive player that touched the ball uh, – punt returner, kick returner, you know, that, that has to improve. And that's, that's why we go out there and, you know, practice and have live action in the preseason game. So I would say that for everybody, that's something that's going to have to be a point of emphasis. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. I think